this is the charger damper so in this video I'm going to show you how to take it apart get to the the shims that you need to think about changing and I'm also going to show you a quick and simple method of improving things that has worked quite nicely for me so the first thing to do is under the low speed compression adjuster there is a small circlet So, circlip out, and then with a pair of pliers, just pull out the low speed adjuster. Just pull out. And all you do is, you'll notice that the oil that's coming out of this is uh, clear. That's because I've gone with a slightly lighter weight oil. Most of the oil out. Okay, first thing, uh, you've got some flats to put a spanner on and you've also obviously got a hex face to put a spanner on and another hex face to put a spanner on at the bottom. First thing to do is to separate the diaphragm portion from the lower portion and as always with RockShock they've used unusual spanner sizes so um, this one 25mm, this one it's probably a 21mm but a 7 16th Whitworth fits perfectly. And you just want to undo that section. There's usually Loctite here. So in here, you have got your low speed compression and your high speed compression shim stack. And this is really easy to remove. You want to first of all, take out the the low speed pin which just unscrews and if you just put a bit of angle on the allen you'll pull it out so that is the low speed adjuster and um, as you're turning the low speed screw it's simply raising this little uh, chamfered bit out of the holes which I'll show you in a second and this uh, the high speed compression then just pulls out so there we go that is sitting inside there and the uh, so the oil goes through the center and out of those holes and the high speed compression stack is on the top here okay so that is the uh, high and low speed compression pull it straight out uh, so in here you have your similar setup to before you have your rebound your rebound adjuster which is going up to a little chamfered rod at the end of those holes there this is the rebound damper the slow speed rebound is controlled by the ports the high speed rebound is controlled by the shims to remove the shim stacks on both ends, we need to undo the, the, this is a nut and this is a bolt. They need to be clamped in soft jaws. And then the nut will undo, 10 millimeter. It's, it's Loctited in place. And when you put it back together, you must put Loctite back on these, uh, that bolt and a touch on that nut. So you want to clamp it, remove the nut, clamp it, remove the bolt, and then you'll get to the shims and then you can lay them out. And that's what I'm going to do next. The standard rebound shim stack is on a medium tune and we're going to move that to a low to a soft rebound tune and that's going to remove those three shims and then we're going to use one of those shims in the compression shim stack so let's reorder it first uh, at the top then it's a 12 then it's a 14 
then it's a 16, then it's the other 8, then it's a 16, and they get removed. So that's my new rebound shim stack at the low. This is the compression shim stack. First of all, we're going to move this up two places. One, two. Then we're going to exchange that with the slightly thinner shim from the rebound shim stack. And then we're going to swap the one we've taken out of there and put it to the top. So that's, our, that's going to be our new stack of shims. That's our compression stack and that's our rebound stack. And we'll just put them back on. So what I've done is I've held the syringe at a vacuum and you'll see the bubbles rising. So I'm just going to leave that for a good 10-15 minutes and then I'll come back, cycle it a few times and do it again. And the idea is to try and get as much of the air out as possible. Okay, so the interesting thing to notice is the porthole size on the compression end compared to the porthole compared to the porthole on the rebound end the rebound porthole is much is quite a bit bigger okay so what we're going to try and do is see if we can find out if drilling out the holes on the low speed rebound makes any difference at all in terms of oil flow so I'm going to fill this cup with oil. On the bottom of there is the, is the nut. And then we're going to attach the one with the drilled out holes. Attach one without drilled out holes. And see whether it flows any faster. Here's a, there's a standard one. And there's one drilled out. So I'm going to uh, lock up the bottom. So that the oil can only come out of here. And then we're going to see if there's any difference in timing. So we're sort of replicating a Zahn cup, um, if you like. It's filled up to there, ready to stop watch. I'm going to stop the stopwatch as soon as the oil flow stops. Here we go. So that was 28 seconds. Exactly the same point. Reset. So that's 22 seconds. That's very good. That's very, very good. Right. The last thing to do with the with this video is to quickly talk about oil weight. This is the three weight that's standard in the charger damper. And these three are all marked as 2.5 weight. But they are not the same viscosity. And it's the viscosity that's important with oil flowing through the compression and the rebound ports and shims. On the chart that will come next, you'll see the quoted figure for viscosity at 40 degrees C. That's what all of the manufacturers state on their data sheets. And you will see that the silkaline is more or less the same as the three weight. This one's the uh, in between and this one's the lighter. So these have a viscosity of around 13, 14. This has a viscosity of around nine. And this one has a viscosity of 6.74.